This way, puppy. There you go. Perfect, 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 perfect. In today's POV, I'll be taking my Nikon Z50 with the 16 to 50 DX lens, also known as the kit lens. And my goal is to show you that you could take this relatively simple setup and take some really good photos with it. I spotted a cool car on the way in. So let's go take a photo of that. And then we'll head back into the downtown. I don't know if 50 is going to be long enough for... Ooh! Okay, this is kind of cool. So the whole idea for this video kind of came about when I was looking back at my YouTube analytics and I noticed that I shot a video in Fort Langley about two years ago, actually ex almost exactly two years ago, and it was with this kit lens. The idea is I'm using the exact same setup. The only difference is about two years of photography and about 20 pounds on my, on my gut. That's about the only difference. Another thing I want to do with this video is I want to answer a few questions that I uh, that I got on Instagram and YouTube. So I'm gonna pull up the first question here. Love my of you. They asked 24 millimeter F 1.7 Nikkor lens. Is it good for the Z50 for portrait photography? Good question. You're gonna get some distortion with that focal length, meaning that your model or whoever is the subject of the picture is going to be a little bit um, longer and skinnier. You're going to want to not get too close to your subject with that lens. I'm going to throw a GIF up on the screen that I've always referenced in regards to like headshot photography with focal lengths. You can see all the different focal lengths and you can see what it does to the face. So the best lens you can use for uh, portraits is somewhere closer to 50 to 85 is gonna give you a really nice look and it's not gonna distort your image too much. This may be kind of good for just a landscape shot here. Something like that. I think I just need to start taking a few photos to get into the uh, get into the flow. I think it's time to pull up another question. Crone Crone Joe asks, are there any books? or classes that you can recommend to learn about photography? Great question. I feel like the best way to learn about photography is to actually do it. And so in that sense, I think you'll learn a lot more by going out and taking photographs, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't, than, than taking a class. If you're going to use a book to learn photography, I think a great idea is to go and find a photo book of a great photographer that you admire and really look through the photos study study what they did and why you think it works and what that's going to teach you is it's going to teach you to see that in your own photos and maybe you can learn what you need to change i think that will get you more results than than learning a textbook or anything like that So I remember coming to this exact spot. I still really like it. It's actually really cool. This this whole like vine, ivy, overgrown. It's really, it's working. 
I think I had to get lower last time. That was the thing. I think there might be something else here. Let's answer another question. Witty.raf asks, what settings do you recommend for autofocus on the Z50? Okay, I use a single point autofocus, so that's all the way on the left if you're in the autofocus zone selection. I'm not leaving it up to the camera. I'm actually selecting the exact point on the frame that I want to be in focus. Okay, here's an example. It's a terrible photo, but there's a little red square in the center right now, but I can move that little red square anywhere I want. See, right now the square is on this uh, parking sign. So the camera knows when I'm half pressing the shutter that it, it was going to focus on that sign. Now watch if I bring this point down to the railing and I hold half press, now it thinks I want to focus on the railing. So sign, railing, sign. So the reason I wanted to come back to Fort Langley two years later is because I want to attempt to show you that upgrading your gear will help you in the, the moment, but it won't help you in the long run. Buying gear, buying lenses, things like that, they're gonna very quickly but very temporarily upgrade your photography. This is crazy. I like it. Interesting. All right, let's get back onto the street. Take some more photos. Fine today. The challenge is just dealing with this light. It's so flat, which usually I don't really mind, but today it's kind of throwing me off because I have no contrast. I'm not really finding much right now. You gotta just keep going, keep trying, don't give up. Another question from. Tamas, what are your plans for 2024? Any new areas of photography you'd like to explore? Okay, thanks for the question, Tamas. I have been working on a project and this subject matter actually works perfectly for it. So cool. So it's kind of funny that at that exact moment, I stumbled upon this bus because this is actually something I've been working on for quite a while. And I would love to release a book this year. And on that note, I'm also working on another series for the channel. I want to start documenting um, how I find and take photos of these cars. I filmed one episode and that is going to come out within the next month or two. I'm just working on it now. I never know if what I said even made any sense. What we need a new battery for now is the GoPro. All right, let's keep going with these questions. Dev Brian 0331 says, what is your thoughts on film cameras? Do you have any plans? on doing film camera content. Okay, great question. And also a little bit funny because last weekend I shot my first roll of film since I was like 12 years old. My thoughts on it are, it's expensive. <laughs> and 
That's actually one of the biggest draws of digital photography for me is I could take as many photos as I want and <laughs> it essentially costs me nothing. It's memory card space, but it is very intriguing. Taking the photos and then waiting for the photos to come back from the photo center, the lab, wherever, wherever you send them. And then you have no clue what happened with it. And that's actually an aspect of it that I, I really enjoy because I feel like the longer you can delay your gratification for something, the more impactful it is. Okay, another question from YouTube. Alex, Alexi plays, uh, he asks, um, are you a full-time photographer? No, I am not a full-time photographer. I am a full-time cabinet maker, custom cabinet maker. And I do this photography thing on a very hobby basis. So the quick answer, no, I am not a full-time photographer. The longer answer is I'm working on it. Another thing I'm trying to work on, I'm trying to start taking more landscape. Kind of a funny thing I've noticed about today is I don't think I've taken a single, like, quote unquote, street photograph yet. I don't know if that's to do with the lens, the location, the day, I don't know. Oh, this, okay, this is an, is an amazing find too, wow. That's pretty cool. It's pretty rad, eh? Chevette. It's like a holy station for you too. I know. <laughs> Yo, hey, you're good. Cheers. Thanks for waiting. No, I'm not moving. <laughs> Sorry? What are you shooting with? Oh, it's just a little mirrorless camera, Nikon Z50. Sick. Yeah. If you watched the video two years ago, on that day I did also bring the 50 to 250 DX lens. It was around, actually it was right at the Tap House Brewery that I put it on and I started using it. So I think today we're gonna do something similar. Feel a couple of raindrops coming. Be time for another another question. Should we look up another question? What is your favorite lens for the Z50? What is your favorite lens for the Z50? And if you needed to upgrade the camera, which one would I upgrade to? Okay, good question. Actually, ironically enough, is the one I just put on. The 50 to 250. This is an amazing lens for the style of photography that I like to do, which is very compressed, compression based. This lens I've taken with me to San Francisco. I take it on every trip I go on, taking it to Alaska, because it's just the 50 to 250 is a really good focal length. It's a super sharp lens because it has built in VR. It's stabilized and it's light, weight, perfect lens for travel. What I was trying to get is this super compressed shot down here with the Fort Langley sign in focus. Also this aperture, 4.5 to 6.3. It's not the greatest, but on days like this, it, it can definitely work. I kind of like this. Uh, The way the light's like bending around here. Another question or comment I got was, do carry on with your work with the humble Z50, Nikon Z50. Your videos really show the world you don't need expensive gear to take good photos. Couldn't agree more. My question, given the chance to tour the world, would you take the Z50 or the Z72? Okay, there's a train coming. Shoot, we're gonna try for a panning shot. But I didn't get the right settings. Which way is it coming? 
That was so risky. Oh my gosh, I think I might have got it, but it was so risky. Oh, the truck, the truck. No. Come on, go, go, go. Okay, cool. Look this way, puppy. There you go. Perfect, 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 perfect. Oh, shit. Okay, guys, I cannot, for the life of me, get this GoPro to keep charging. So, Rodina, I'm going to answer your question. If I had to travel the world with one camera, I would pick the Z50. And I'm not just saying that because I own it. I'm saying that because I really uh, believe that this form factor and this, even though it's a crop sensor camera, it is honestly a benefit more than a hindrance. This thing can give me a reach that a full frame, frame camera couldn't, with this lens especially. Just for that reason alone, this setup, I'm taking around the world 10 out of 10 times. Okay, to finish it out, I think I'm gonna end with my good buddy, Chris Palmer, actually. Chris Palmer, good buddy of mine, fellow POV compatriot, snuck in at the buzzer and asked, if you couldn't shoot street photography for a whole year, what would I shoot instead? Honestly, if I couldn't shoot street, I would love to join you, Chris, on the mountains of British Columbia. If I couldn't shoot street for an entire year, I would probably dedicate myself to taking landscape photography for an entire year and the question still remains have I even taken a single quote-unquote street photograph today I don't know okay answered all the questions you guys sent in thank you again for sending those in now if I couldn't take for street photographs for the rest of my life, what would I do? Hey guys, I cannot for the life of me figure out how to get this GoPro to work. It is just, it's gone forever, apparently. If you liked the video and you don't wanna miss videos like this coming up, then hit the subscribe button down below. Street photography, photography, POV style content. So stick around for more of that. See you next time.